Good afternoon all. This is a really horrible wind-up radio. I've had it for several years. I bought it when I was going through a bit of an eco phase. Um, but it's just so disgusting that I want to throw it away. But I thought before I do, I'll take it apart, see what's inside. Now there are a couple of reasons why this doesn't really fit the eco criteria. Um, I mean, it's got a wind-up handle thing which you can turn. Actually, I noticed this morning that it seems to have lost contact with the motor. You can turn it backwards now, but if I turn it forwards, it just sort of scrapes. It's really horrible. Um, yeah, so one of the things is that the torch on this end is an incandescent bulb. I mean, if this was genuinely eco, this would have an LED. But no, it's got an incandescent lamp which just gobbles up power faster than you can say, I don't know, bush. Let's try the radio. Uh, 909 on AM is Radio 5. Um, but um, it doesn't work very well on FM here because it's got very little signal. There is an FM antenna here. Horrible thing. Um, now the other thing that um, makes me think that this isn't particularly eco it's the fact that um, the rechargeable batteries in here are extremely tiny and because they're so useless and hold very little power they've made provision for putting in normal AA cells to keep this thing running for a reasonable length of time. That's just not very eco. Let's take these batteries out. These are the ones that run the radio and the lamp. Um, these two in here you're meant to leave in because they run the clock and of course if the rechargeable battery uh, goes too low then the clock settings are lost so it is a bit of a compromise but uh, they're worth leaving in and then I'll just give it a bit of a wind and we'll see how much well how much lamp we can get and how much radio I can't wind very aggressively now because obviously this handles worked its way loose from the motor oh in fact I can't wind at all now that's completely lost contact with the gearbox in there and the generator so that's not going to happen uh, let's see if there's any power in here. <laughs> well, there was a little whimper from the siren. There's this horrible siren thing. It's a shame, actually. I can't do that now. No, that's completely gone. Let's take this apart. So let's start, start taking the screws out. This is a one-way teardown because I have absolutely no intention of putting this thing back together afterwards. It's all going in the trash. Well, this is uh, pretty horrible. There are lots of wires here bridging one side to the other. Uh, the generator has this tiny little shaft on it with a, a, a section cut out. And then in here, there's just this little bit of pressed, I don't know, tin, steel probably, uh, with a slight D shape on it. And the D shape's obviously uh, got uh, misshapen. And now the handle just turns without turning the gearbox. There's no contact there at all now. Uh, the generator is just a silly little DC motor here with a gearbox. Nothing special. Uh, I need to get this open really. That's done it. So let's take the lamp off. This is the presumably 3 volt incandescent bulb lamp. Yeah, it's a standard miniature Edison screw MES bulb. What's that? 3.6 volts. 0.3 amps, horrid little thing. Just spotted the um, rechargeable battery. It seems to be under this flap in the battery compartment. And there's a screw here. So will this cover come out? Yeah, there it is. Well, understandably, or perhaps predictably, it's quite small because it never really held much power. It's uh, 3.6 volts. It's... Um, What's that? Two, oh, two thirds AA. So they're two thirds AA cells, 400 milliamp hours, uh, 3.6 volts. It's actually on a connector, so I can take that out. I might actually keep that. So the connector is here. If I can get the this connector out, which I think I can, then I could hang on to that battery. That should come out of here now. Yeah, it's one of these little... Um, telephone type battery packs. Nickel metal hydroid, 3.6 volts, 400 milliamps. I will hang on to that. It's probably the only part I will hang on to. Now this is clearly manual tuning because we've got a, a variable capacitor here 
the inductor here, but it's got um, a digital tuning readout on the front. Let's see if this will still come on. No, I need to put the batteries back in. So although it's manual tuning, you can see from the dial there, 909 I think is Radio 5. You've got this uh, digital tuning readout, that's reading in kilohertz. But it never seemed very accurate. I think it kind of seemed to settle at 912. So I just wonder whether there's some sort of adjustment for that and it was never set very accurately. Not sure. Anyway, let's have a look deeper inside. So if I take out this main board, the display board is underneath here, the one with the liquid crystal display on it. So let's rip this one out. This board doesn't seem very keen to come out. Nope, it seems to be stuck in there, mainly because of this tuning dial. So I can pull the knob off. Well, massive force had to be exerted on this to get it out. Now I realise why, because these uh, tuning and uh, volume knobs are actually screwed in. So uh, yes, that's quite horrible, that, isn't it? This board's got two really different sides to it. You've got um, surface mount integrated circuit here, the AM FM radio chip, and lots of surface mount components, quite uh, fine tracking on this side. And on the other side, it looks like this. It looks like sort of 19, early 1970s, well, radio technology. It's just bizarre. It's like complete Jekyll and Hyde, this thing. So now let's take out uh, this board. This board's interesting. It's got... Um, a little PCB uh, soldered down onto the main PCB. This is the one with the, this is presumably the LCD driver with a little um, blobbed chip here, but on its own PCB soldered down onto the, the other PCB. That's rather odd. All right, so that's out. Here's the, <laughs> the clock still actually working. That's quite remarkable. Do the button still work? Yeah, still press the button, says the alarm time. 7 a.m. So it's very interesting. Just try and get that a bit close to the camera. How that board with the chip on it is actually a separate board soldered down onto the main board. Here's the wiring for the LCD itself, which runs across to there. Yeah, that's quite interesting. It's got still got power. This thing. Oh yeah, the batteries are still in. That's good. So although this is kind of still working. Um, now is that that's kilohertz? Yeah, so I should probably be able to tune this still. Uh, if I can turn the knob on the yeah, I can tune it to, but I can't get any sound because I've broken the potentiometer. But actually, if I short the middle pin to yeah, there we are. Now if I can tune it to nine oh nine, we can probably still get something on the radio. Pretty close. Oh, wonderful stuff. So yeah, nothing really unexpected in here. Amazed that it's still working, actually. Um, the generator really quite disappointing uh, in the coupling between that sort of very feeble little uh, shaft and the handle. That was doomed to failure, and it has indeed failed. The uh, lamp being this horrible incandescent bulb thing, that should have been LED right from the start. And, and I mean, I bought this at a time where the LED uh, torches were out. So why did they go and put a lamp in this thing? Just awful. And I've just noticed that as well as the radio still working, if I short out the pot, like that, uh, the siren -y thing still works as well. <laughs> Horrible, isn't it? Now for comparison's sake, here's a really nice eco radio. Uh, this is the IMAX by Freeplay. Um, there's a solar panel on the top, which helps, doesn't do a huge amount. This thing is see-through, so we can see what's inside. The batteries actually aren't that much bigger. We've got three full-size triple A's, which probably aren't so different to the three two-thirds size uh, double A's. But uh, I don't know, it just seemed to last longer. Similar sort of um, board here with the, uh, the uh, radio stuff on it, and a coil, and a manual uh, tuning again. Although it's got this nice, oh, it's got this really nice, big, visible 
dial on there. Nice big speaker. But the generator, well, I'll come back to the generator. Eh? There's a little um, LED. Oh, the battery's a bit flat. Well, let's do the generator now. Really massive um, quality construction. And you can see inside here these really sturdy coils, the neodymium magnets around the outside. And it's just got a really good sound to it. And now after sort of, I don't know, two, three, four seconds of winding, that light will last for ages. Uh, if I switch the radio on, if I can remember how to do it. Let's put it on AM, tune it into 909. Just something quality about it. So I'm quite glad ready to be saying goodbye to this Bush radio, which had broken. I mean, it is justified that I'm checking it out. The generator had failed. Um, it does still work. I sort out the pot, but um, no, it's bye-bye, horrible, nasty Bush Radio. Cheerio.